What's up guys, this is Flo Hawk and the original Brad here with WLJS 91.9 FM, Jacksonville, Alabama. Sitting here with P.O.D. today. What's up guys? What's up man, it's loud. Yeah it is just a little bit. Anyway man, I just want to talk with you a second. So P.O.D. being one of the most successful Christian metal bands out there. What do you attribute this success to? Uh, well first of all I wouldn't call us a Christian metal band. I think uh, those are just, again, labels that have been put on us. We've been open about our faith. I don't necessarily identify with Christianity. I identify with Jesus. Oh. And, uh, you know, people want to make, um, they want to put you in a box. So, right. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't argue the fact either, but if someone who listens to Slayer you know, or whatever and says, Oh, I can't listen to POD because they're a Christian man. That's that's that's, that's ridiculous. Awesome, <laughs> that's ridiculous. You know. That's cool. That's awesome. So I just, you know what? We've been around 20 years. We've always been a hardworking man, and we continue to work. You know, we we took off five years from this business and this industry, and came back on our own terms. So we're work, We're still working. You know. That's fantastic, man. That's that's a cool. That's a fantastic description, man. Come on All in right, here. I got a question for you. Uh, in 2006, your lead guitarist, Jason, decided to leave the band. Uh, same time, same day, Marcos asked to come back. Uh, what, do you, what do you attribute that to? Do you think it was some kind of divine intervention, or do you think it was just meant to happen? No, I, it, it wasn't on the same day. It was, um, matter of fact, Jason, because we were going right into a new recording process, and Jason, being honorable, decided to step out before that. He could have went in and said, let me write the record and then not tour. But he said, you know what, this is where I'm at, my heart is what I'm thinking. So he had actually, you know, stepped out and nobody else knew but the band. And so at that point, it was around Halloween, I think Marcos gave us a call and he was just like, hey dude, I just, you know, I miss my friends. You know, he was thinking about some dime bag stuff and just, you know, how short life is, you know what I mean? And he was like, dude, we got history together. And it's like, it wasn't even about music, it was more like, Let's just get together and hang out. You know, I miss my bros, and so we did that. You know, we had some lunch, got coffee. We just started hanging out again, and then, you know, when we thought it was comfortable enough to tell him, hey, matter of fact, you know, Jason actually went home. And it wasn't, again, it still wasn't about music, but we're like, hey, whenever you want, we'll, let's jam, you know? And it was like, we'll, we'll, we'll step into that dance when we get there, and it just, you know, it just evolved and it happened. Yeah. That's cool. Well. I'm sure you've been asked this question and you guys have had your fill of it, I'm sure. But the track I Am yeah. off the new album. Now, I'm going to take a different approach to this because there's been plenty of slams and bashes and yeah. positive negative reviews. And I'm one of those guys that when I listen to music, you know, I don't care what your label is. I don't care what you do. Everybody has their own reason for what they do. And with this song, I just, I feel the reality in it, you know? You know, I, I just don't, I don't see the fact of a band just trying to use a word to make a record you know to make sales but this song just the, the lyrics are just man they're intense you know can you tell us a little about uh, what brought this on you know as as much to go to that link yeah it, it was one of the first songs we did as a demo once we decided to we want to start writing music again after our little hiatus and in that hiatus you know i i do a lot of stuff with youth outreaches and, and um, drug rehab programs and a lot of speaking engagements at high schools and stuff and you know what there's this is a hurting generation you know what I mean these kids are coming up to me you know they're, they're the majority of them are suicidal they're already addicted to something from you know every drug out there to pornography to just everything that consumes them and it doesn't even allow them to be kids you know and so they're cutting themselves they're you know broken families it's just the, the list is endless and but me being a daddy myself I, I have a heart for these young people and so you know and even in my experience I wasn't raised in a church bro so I you know when someone's around me they they say something or they're drinking some oh sorry man I mean offend you I'm like you don't offend me dog yeah my, my friends are are dealers and killers in, in jail you know what I mean in prison so it's like nothing offends me I, this is a faith that I choose but in doing that it was just it's more like the most honest prayer you know like I don't think the world has a problem with Jesus they have a world they have a problem with religion right they have a problem with the organized you know I, I say what God says I speak for God and it's like no you don't God speaks for himself and so 
you know, it's it's really an honest prayer saying, hey, I, I believe in you, Jesus. I, I do believe in you, but it's everything else that's so confusing. You know? It's everything else that steps in the way and says, I'm God or I'm this religion. or So it, these kids are confused when they really just need to know that God's grace is sufficient and that God's love covers a multitude of sin and God can heal and God can cure and that's just what it comes down to. So we can see this track as a you know reach out for people who can actually relate exactly. you know from both sides you know both aspects right. saying no one's perfect no one's perfect you know bro. so stuff's gonna roll you and know what like I mean. So. It's like you're telling God hey I'm, I'm all these things and I but I, I do believe that you love me regardless and I need help you know and so the only thing is is that you know you get into church sometimes and a lot of these churches are so safe and comfortable in their four walls and something like a cuss word offends them when right. they're, they're actually absolutely clueless to everything else that's going on in the world so we're not we're not offended by a four little word that's cool man that's awesome well, on the same album which is fantastic uh, murdered love mm. can you give us a little bit you know what What's special it's, about that? You know? you know, it's one of our favorite songs to, to play live just because it's heavy, it's it's fun. Um, but, you know, it's a dark kind of eerie type of song, you know, and chords and stuff. And so it was actually titled first The Day That They Murdered Love. And it, it goes back to the crucifixion. It, it goes back to that moment that, you know, Christ surrendered his life. And it's like at that point in time, you know, the scriptures say that the, you know, the ground split open and the, you know, the earthquake and the sky split open. And it was just a hopeless moment, not knowing the end result would be salvation, you know. And so for us, it was like, it just sounds eerie. And so the Bible says that God is love. And then it, the lyrics are just this description of murdering this God that is love. That's awesome, man. We're not God haters. If you haven't realized yet, we're not God haters. We're God lovers. All right, your new album, or the newer album, Murdered Love, People are saying it sounds a lot like the older stuff. Like, do you think that has something to do with you guys hooking back up with your longtime collaborator, Howard yeah, Benson? I mean, I mean, the music is written regardless before we go to Howard, but Howard, he gives us his input. But what happened was, bro, we took almost five years off. That means we basically just put our fists up to the industry, to labels, to management, to book, to everybody that is trying to tell us what kind of band we should be. And then we said, you know what? When we decide to write a record, we'll write a record. And when we do, it'll be us four sitting in a room, looking at each other, <laughs> you know, connecting with each other and writing the record that we want to write. We're not keeping up with the times. We're not keeping up with the, the trendy industry that's going on. And, you know, we're not keeping up with radio. We're, we're grateful and thankful that our song is on the radio charts, but it was never the intentions. It's like, we're gonna write what we love playing live and we'll play every single song on this record live because we enjoy it. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Whereas before, you know, it's like, we've always written the music we want, but when you have people subconsciously just in your brain and in your heart and telling you, well, you want the success of Satellite, you want this, it's all business, you know? And that's why you look at a lot of these bands and then you see the change of style, the change not only in music, but yeah. in dress and clothes and makeup and hair. And it's like everybody's becoming what they think is hot right now. Yeah. If you look at us, we're the same guys, dude. Freaking dickies, khakis, skating, surfing, living in the streets. It's like still the same guys, you know? Awesome. Well, can't wait to hear you guys later on. Awesome, and thank you very much yeah, for sitting down and talking to us. Thank you guys, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> And that was P.O.D. You heard it right here. Stay tuned to WLJS 91.9 FM Jacksonville for the latest in metal and all metal news, all metal music. You heard it here. <laughs>